Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'd like to talk about the early snowfalls that have opened the ski resorts in Europe six weeks early, 50 year snows in Moscow, and meter deep amounts all along in the Kapchanka Peninsula after Typhoon Nuri collapsed into a 924 millibar low. Let's take a look in the Environment Canada snow departure depth. Right below the Canadian flag you'll notice all those dark blue and purple dots. That's where the heaviest snowfalls are occurring across Eurasia. And the Global Snow Lab here lists the snow cover anomalies through 2014. Again it's in an upward trend like we saw for the fall snowfalls in United States North America there. And of course there are heavy snowfall events happening everywhere across northern Europe right now in Russia. The first one I'll bring to your attention the Brenner Motorway. Look at the amount of trucks that are out early. Now think about this. These trucks are out there three to six weeks early and they will be. I wouldn't say daily but at least two to three times a week. Now this is going to add on to the road budget for the fuel, the overtime for the crews, the salt, all these types of things. And they're going to be later out into the spring season as well. So you can add another six weeks of use for these trucks and road crews. You know you're going to have a lot of states, municipalities, countries will have to start budgeting for increased road maintenance and also keeping the utilities up, the infrastructure grid up. Two meters of snow fall in Turkey in the heaviest place. The average was around 20 inches, almost two feet or 50 centimeters around Artvin. 36 villages were, were snowed in there. These are first season snowfalls. Look at the depth of this. Let's take a closer look. This should be flurries or sprinkles or some kind of light dusting. It should not be so deep to bury a car and strand motorists when they need to come to get rescued. That's that's a wow, you know. Look at that picture. This looks very similar to what happened in Tennessee, about the same snow depth as well. So it seems to be an emerging pattern around the northern hemisphere. Speaking of Europe, let's take a look. In the snow, they always have really good ideas and articles about where the snow is falling. A couple of their latest posts talking about how heavy the snows are and allowed the ski resorts across the northern Alps to open three to six weeks early. Take a look here at how much snow there actually is. Fresh powder right there. And speaking of the fresh powder, somebody put this on the Rosetta Comet. Notice that. It'll take a look at the Rosetta Comet if you get a chance. Mixing that up with the powder there and it is snowing so much everywhere that you can ski early. Alright, Finland, they're used to snow, but 40,000 customers lose power in their early winter snows in November 6th. To minus 25 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look here at the Fahrenheit Celsius converter. 25 below Celsius is 13 below zero Fahrenheit. Finland already getting really cold up there. Now as these vortex lows swing off the United States, they're going to push right over into Europe and it should just be a continuous wave going across and pound down somewhere over in northern Eurasia again or somewhere in central Eurasia. It'll just have this wave pattern wafting around the entire season. And these are the remnants of Hurricane Gonzalo. The high wind forcing waterfall backwards off of the waterfalls. It's a pretty interesting video to watch. Guy gets pretty close up there with that high wind. As well, the windstorm swept through the Swiss Alps, that same storm. High winds, heavy snows. And this is the Global Snow Labs departure from normal. Look at what's happening over Russia. So let's take a look down. You can notice those 9 or 10 pixels in one square right over the Moscow area. Snows are much heavier than usual. It's the heaviest in the last 50 years that they're experiencing right now. Again, notice it's that heavy, thick, wet snowfall and really deep in the amounts there. Not just a dusting, but easily discernible how deep it is. And this is where we get into those negative feedback loops on the economy. Great Lakes shipping, road deliveries, rail deliveries, uh, lack of electricity to factories due to downed power lines. All these are going to start to have a more pronounced effect this year as it really does start to affect the global infrastructure and to see how we can cope with these heavy snows because next year it's going to actually be more than it is this year. If the trend continues, this trend will continue until 2030 or 2035, downward, colder every year, which would affect crops, which makes wheat and corn futures quite a good play. Natural gas, this is a map of the pipelines coming out of Russia. You can see how integral and how important certain locations in the buffer zone between Europe are to both sides. And continuing over to East Russia at Kamchatka Peninsula, 
and Vladivostok, they were just pounded with the remnants of Typhoon Nuri, the superstorm that's been downgraded into the lowest millibar pressure for a non-typhoon type storm ever on the planet, which is racing toward Alaska creating 50-foot waves. Nobody's talking about what happened in eastern Russia, but they were pelted with over three feet of snow. This is a better look here. See how deep the low just strolled right up the center of the peninsula there. Everything was buried in snow on that. And the reason for the incredibly heavy snowfall was that Arctic push that you can see here, which was forecast through the first week of November, colliding with that storm system, the remnants of Nuri, the low millibar at 924 millibars, pushing through. Thanks for watching, and I hope you see which way our climate is starting to deviate in the winters now with earlier starts and probably later endings wetter fields for planting and higher prices for your food coming now.